All right. Uh, good evening, guys. I uh, just wanted to come to you today with a um, short video. I wanted to discuss a, a particular book that is often used among uh, apologetics efforts among those of the Church of Christ to prove that their movement pre-existed Alexander Campbell and their associates. I was recently on the Knights of God program discussing the use of such a resource in a debate uh, that recently occurred uh, um, between um, Travis Thomas and Tim Tant um, concerning this issue. And um, Mr. Thomas brought up this book, and he, I thought he did a very poor job of representing what was actually, actually in this book. So um, I wanted to um, play for you the event and then enter in in the comments to show the citations from the book that I was using um, so that you can actually see them and then uh, respond briefly to a follow-up video that Mr. Thomas made concerning uh, my comments concerning the book with concerning his statements that I was um, giving lies concerning this book. And I will let the viewers to decide who's determined the truth and the actual nature of the events that surround Mr. Foster and the events of this book. So I'm going with that, I'm going to share my screen and bring up the actual discussion and we will go from there. We were talking about their use of history. Now, I thought this was hilarious. He kept, uh, you were pressing him for history, and then he said, well, why can't we just use the Bible? Why do you have to keep using secular sources? Oh, but I knew you was going to go there, and I've done all this research. I've been sitting on it for three months. I, he's he's, he's going to be blown away. And then he, he quotes this book called, uh, what was it? Traces uh, of Heresy. Kingdom. Not just that, but The Heresy okay. Detected. That was the okay. big one. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, Okay, what I'm going to say here, I'm as, as serious as I can get. Travis, if you do nope. not repent from lying on this, nobody can treat you seriously ever again. I am nope. dead serious. When you read this book, anybody can read this book. It's not in print anymore. You can find it on Google Books, the, the Google Read app. It's yeah. for free if you got a Google account. Speaking of, you have to have agreeing to all of their distinguishing marks to be a member of the church. This was a guy, this 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 uh, foster guy, called himself a reverend. Strike one, you can't do that in the COC. Strike <laughs> two, they had congregational government because he every matter that got brought up in that dispute came up to a vote of the church. Where does that happen in the COC? It doesn't. Um, and then uh, this the strike three here, there these the articles that he listed. He said that I think there was there was ten of them. Actually, if you read the document, there's four of them that he would admit to. He took back some things. Um, but in, in those things, it never says what his view is of baptism. He talks about gospel obedience. And then mm -hmm. the people of his association who investigated, when they started talking to him, reading a little bit more, he said, well, maybe Mr. Foster is not as heretical as it sounds, but he's playing with fire here. So that was their official con conclusion on the matter. But what he thought about baptism really isn't discussed. But when you read this document, and I'm going to give you a page number, and I double dog dare any of you Travis <laughs> fanboys to go look it up. <laughs> when you go here and look at page number 34 in that book, there is one passage where baptism is discussed. And when I read this mm -hmm. to you, you're going to fall out of your chair. <laughs> when they were discussing t with him about uh, the issue of his denial of original sin, and they were trying to discuss with him politely, which is one thing Foster wasn't really into. Go, You can read all that drama. He says, and uh, uh, they're reasoning with him here, quote, on page 34, if children are not polluted, why then are they baptized? Mm -hmm. Let that sink oh, in. They were baptizing yeah. infants. Yeah. And then he says, why yeah. must they be regenerated in order to their entering into the kingdom of God? What is this? <laughs> I mean, every time you investigate these examples that they provide where there's details, it's hogwash. 
So it, it, what Travis was doing was engaging in selected quotes where this guy yeah. called his group a yeah. church of Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. He ignores all the other yeah. stuff, hopes you don't investigate it, so you listen to him and quit asking questions. Right. That's what all this yeah. is about. But if you have to, I'm going to say it, lie and cover up the truth to defend your position, you are not worth listening to. Mm. Yep. Amen. Okay, so there is the particular part of the discussion that we were involved in. I'm going to stop sharing the screen here just for a second. We will return to the screen here in a moment to examine some things that we need to look at. So basically, there are two quotes we need to look at here. We'll go back here. We'll reshare the screen. This time, bring up from the Google books where you can actually see a facsimile here. So here we go. Uh, the particular references here that I had mentioned, uh, we're looking at, yeah, page 34 and 35. I'm going to back up just a bit here because of some claims that Travis makes concerning this book so that you can see here. You can see at the beginning of this letter that is sent to <clears throat> Reverend Mr. Isaac Foster that uh, this uh, it begins here, Sir, the convocation convened in this place have received a paper from you. This is on page 30. And a committee, page or page 31, page 32, and a committee of the church under your pastoral care requesting a public disputation. So um, these are the people, the people who are writing this letter to Foster, the group of people in the association of his church, uh, church association here, reviewing his case concerning um, the problems that they have with his teaching. You can go on down into page 34 with a relevant citation here at um, concerning the article one under discussion for what Mr. Foster was teaching, denying original sin. And one thing I was very impressed with with this book was the amount of care um, and concern for Mr. Foster and those under his care at his church um, to reason with him in a fair and honest dialogue. And when they're trying to get him to pay attention to the natural, logical ends his teachings will go to they get here on to page 34 and they've already discussed their notice that scriptural evidence for for the the doctrine of original sin they're not quoting creeds they're they're talking about what the bible has to say on the subject and as they're trying to reason with mr foster here in the letter you see here this quote if children are not baptized I'm going to highlight this here. If children are, excuse me, if children are not polluted, why then are they baptized? And why must they be regenerated in order to be, in order to their entering into the kingdom of God? Thus evident it is to every candid, impartial mind that man is born into the world with a sinful nature and not in the moral image of God, consequently not free from guilt or desert of punishment. So they are reasoning here with him, getting him to see, okay, if this isn't true, as you say, why are we engaging in this practice? Why are the children um, baptized? And then why are we also saying that they must eventually be here regenerated into the kingdom of God? So that's the true nature of the quote here of that particular one. Now, uh, with this quote here, um, I'm going to jump to Travis's um, response to me where he call me a liar concerning the issues in this book first he makes the claim that the author here is giving his personal opinion on it no it is not it's the opinion of the committee and he they are including mr foster in the discussion as we've discussed where that came from and i actually will show you his comments there and also he will make reference to another comment on page i believe it is 44 in his video, as if I'm trying to hide something from you. Let's see. Let me pull it up here just a moment. 
I'm a little late, Travis. Give the quote here. 44, 44. Yeah, here we go. Page 44. Yeah, here we go. Page 44. All right. The quote here is from this paragraph. And Travis will make reference to this part of the paragraph in his comments. So here's this paragraph that, um, and their official final response here to Mr. Foster and his teachings, quote, that all mankind came into the world destitute of the moral image of God is apparent from their universal disposition to actual sin, as soon as capable thereof, and is abundantly confirmed from the general tenor of the word of God. And they give several scriptural references. Notice that, scripture, not creeds. Also, the divine institution of the circumcision and baptism of infants plainly imports the truth here rejected by Mr. Foster. This sentence here is something that Travis seizes upon, and he says this proves his case. Let's actually look at the sentence before we see his comments, shall we? Also, the divine institution of circumcision and baptism of infants plainly imports the truth here rejected by Mr. Foster. So they gave scriptural evidence for what they believed in the previous paragraph, and then they cite the, the practice of circumcision and the practice of baptism of infants, and they say it plainly imports or implies the truth, which they mention above, here rejected by Mr. Foster. So what was rejected by Mr. Foster? It's a simple English uh, exercise in grammar here. The, what's being rejected? The, the, the circumcision and baptism plainly imports the truth here that's rejected by Mr. Foster. This phrase, rejected by Mr. Foster, modifies truth. The truth rejected, not the baptism of infants or circumcision. So the claims made here in a desperate attempt by Mr. Uh, Thomas to get out of the massive uh, rebuke that he received in our discussion are, are just laughable and his accusations of lies are just shameful and are not worthy of someone who would call themselves a follower of Jesus Christ. So we're going to hop on over here to his actual video where he here's his video that he made uh, after the events of our discussion quoted here Paul Day hates truth Calvinists lie again here he is making the claim concerning that first citation that we discussed above that the writer is saying that that quote is something that he is the one baptizing children. No, as we discussed, we looked at the pages before the citation and to the citation. This was the committee being in a discussion with Mr. Foster, including him, appealing to his current practice, their whole practice, and getting him to see, well, if you deny this, why are we doing that? Then there's one more quote I want to get to here. Let's see if we can find it, where he addresses that page 44. Let's see, we'll just scoot on over here. And this is his big contention where he 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 claims that this is my second lie in the matters that were presented here. Here it is. He's quoting here, and you can see, maybe you can see here, we'll uh, pull it up here. He's pointing here to this, that, that sentence we just reviewed on page 44, and he pu puts in his commentary, Mr. Foster rejected infant baptism. Maybe you need to repent since it depends on if you were ever saved um, by Tim. So the claims here made by Mr. Thomas in attempt to get around what we pointed out in the discussion simply do not hold water. They are desperate, and they need to be retracted along with these accusations of lying. So what you can see, we'll stop the share. We'll just we'll talk this out through the end of the discussion here. This is an example of what happens so often within our apologetic efforts to reach the COC. When they give these select quotes in these historical resources trying to prove that their movement pre-existed their founders like Alexander Campbell, Stone, and others, um, when the actual quotes are given, uh, they will start making these counterclaims of lies and misrepresenting the truth. 
but you can see what this actually does here when you see what they're actually all about when you try and discuss these issues with them basically i think we could sum it up in um just in this manner basically when they come to the use of these resources there is such a devotion to their particular brand of cannibalism cam here that they are literally blind to all else that move. They have to find things that are not there in order to continue their efforts and to continue their movement. It really is – it's not something to rejoice about. It's something to be quite sad about as Mr. Thomas is often fond about saying this about me and others, when someone can read historical research like that and come to these conclusions and be blind to what's actually is being said here, it's extremely sad, and these are people that we need to pray for, that the Spirit of God would use the Word of God to open their minds to the truth. I hope you've enjoyed um, this review and discussion of matters that came up after that event, and it will whet your appetite to actually read this episode in church history. It's, it's quite an interesting tale. It's a short read. You can find it on Google. You can read it for free. You can't really find it for print anymore. I'll do my best to put a link in the, the end there so that you can see it and you can read it for yourselves and see how it was handled. So I hope you're having a good get, good day and that this will help you out tremendously in the future. God bless to all of you who watch this video.